welcome back to Dallas Sports. Another edition, another week. Um, what we have in store for you guys today, uh, we would like to welcome uh, our another an international, Namibian international rugby player, Yandre de Toy. Welcome, welcome on this evening. How That's are right. you doing? I'm good, thank you. Uh, working quite hard at the moment, uh, but really doing good at the moment. Can't complain. Awesome, awesome. That is absolutely fantastic to hear, you know, that you are safe back home. I know we're going to go into into this evening. Obviously, you're going to share with us uh, a bit about Yandre. So hopefully everyone who's joining us would like to welcome you guys online. We would like to say uh, feel free to, you know, to throw out some questions. Uh, hopefully we can interact and link with you guys as well. But we have been absolutely super excited to have you on our chat and would like to say once again thank you for coming on our platform uh, to share your story um you i'm sure yeah i know you've got a quite a busy, busy schedule you know if you're not flying all over to bermuda or you know you're all over the place so i i know you're <laughs> quite busy so we appreciate it absolutely appreciate it so um Andre, i was gonna i was gonna start with um you know i i normally i love questions and i love people's stories so I've got quite a lot of questions that you know that we've got in store. So um, feel free to you know just to talk, you know, like just have fun, just uh, just be yourself. Uh, and um, like I said, um, you know, I know we've we've spoken briefly yesterday, uh, but uh, I'm I'm just gonna go straight into it. So the first one would be uh, what I've got is please tell us about yourself and you know where you're from and where you've been born. Uh, just if you don't mind, just uh, just tell everyone, you know, where 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 you're from in Namibia. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I'm I'm Yanre <laughs> uh, I was born and raised on a farm. Mm. Currently, still working on the farm with my dad. Um, previously, nice. I was away with some rugby. Um, I was born in a small town about uh, 110 kilometers from our farm. Uh, the hospital right. doesn't, doesn't exist anymore, um, but my dad and the doctor was good friends and uh, while I was being born, they were chatting about the Western Province game from the weekend, so <laughs> <laughs> I think that was quite a good right. introduction for me into the world. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's pretty so, cool, yeah, then, uh, From there on, I uh, went to a small school, uh, Yel Norton. it's uh, like a small farm school, and uh, Rugby just kicked off for me. It's a big love for the Namibian people, for the school as well. So mm-hmm. I really just got into it and uh, had my dad motivating and uh, encouraging me all the way. Absolutely brilliant. Like, you know, um, I, I've uh, I've known quite a lot of guys who grew up on a farm as well and who was boarding, you know, like being in the hostel. Uh, yes. and, and just from a young age, you know, like, and it's always interesting, like, a lot of them are actually really good rugby players. Is that what you guys go, you know, growing up? Is that what you get up to on the farm? Just get a get a rugby ball and just kick it about. <laughs> I, 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 think, I like uh, uh, I think that plays a big part. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> there's not too much to entertain us on the farm. So uh, <laughs> right. kicking the ball about is one of those things. Uh, usually it comes from dad. Uh, he has to be a big motivator. And uh, I think just working on the farm in general, chasing sheep, <laughs> testing the speed around there, wrestling with the sheep and the cows and everything. <laughs> 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 so that's where you get your your, your rugby life from. Is, uh, oh, man. Just doing the farm work, the basics. And uh, mm-hmm. I think when you get the opportunity to live your dream and just to be who you are, you, you grab mm-hmm. it with both hands because in the farm you're quite isolated. Mm. He, I, I love the idea of a farm. Honestly, I, I, I'm absolutely, you know, if I could have a farm one day, man, I, I, I know I'll just, I'll just be, I think the, the space, the time, the, I know it's hard work. Don't get me wrong. I've spoken to so many farmers around here as well. <laughs> you know, some of them, some of them play a bit of rugby where, where in the area where I'm, but um, they're always busy and they work. Obviously the hours, it's, it doesn't stop, does it? Is it the same for you guys? Like that, there's no set time. It's just you've just got to run with it. Is 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 that what what you guys experience as well? Yeah, that's true. Um, well, 
we're, we're small stock farmers, so for us it's a bit different than people farming with crops and so on. Uh, mm. But as you said, uh, there's no certain time, there's no certain time to have breakfast or lunch or to start working or stop working. Uh, especially now, going into summer with the heat, uh, you try mm. to beat the mm. sun, so you're up quite early um, in the field working. In the, in the afternoon, you take lunch for quite a while to miss it. <laughs> Just to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, okay. when the cow falls in the pit, you have to go into the dark or whatever you need to do to finish off the day. Um, but it's very rewarding work as well. Uh, I can imagine, and and it's physical as well. Like you, like you just said, if the cow falls in, you just gotta you know go and pick it up, put it on the shoulders, <laughs> and carry it one way. <laughs> I know, I know, guys that have actually done that. You know, it's just it's just mind blowing. Like, but I'm 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 very. Um, you know, it interests me a lot. Like, that's why I, I just love the fact that you're sharing, you know, like like your upbringing, you know, you growing up on a farm. It's just, you know, being physical and strong is second nature. And and, and and that goes hand in hand with, with rugby. You know, for some of you that's watching and, and anyone running into this video, like I always say, please go and check out Yandre's highlights. This guy, you know, he can move. And it's not just quick, he's super strong as well. He's, he's quite a very balanced runner. And um, I think um, maybe that comes from maybe chasing after spring box on the farm, <laughs> chase them down, run them down, some kudus, some kudus and tackle them and stuff. But please go check out these highlights. It, it is absolutely <laughs> impressive as well. Please, and share it if you can. Um, I was going to ask you as well, um, Henry, it's like, you know, when you started... I was going to ask you when did you start playing rugby, but I think that's that question is. I left to I left to ask when did you start thinking? Do you know what I want to play rugby? Because I know you you probably since you were walking you had a rugby ball in your hand, but <laughs> when did you realize? You know what I'm. This is what I'm I'm going to do as well. I, I actually like doing this, and I'm going to run with it. Well, when did that come about? Um. Well, my dad. Uh, he, he played a bit of rugby as well. He, um, he played for Namibia on second side. Mm -hmm. And um, he was always telling me all the stories about how he used to play rugby. And uh, unfortunately, he played in the era not, without iPhones. So there's no right, right. was as good as he tells me he was. <laughs> nice one. But uh, my dad really motivated me throughout life. And um I was always a, a small kid going into into my smaller grades, um, say when I was 13, 14 years old. And uh, I liked it when uh, people underestimated me because of my size. And I started playing mm. some proper rugby maybe in high school. And I enjoyed it so much. There wasn't anything else for me I wanted to do uh, apart from mm. farming. Um, I wanted to have a, a bit of a break away from life and uh, do something mm. different, not just be the typical guy, go to school, go to the farm. Mm. Um, so mm. I'm going to stay like around 14, 15 years old. Um, 2007, the World Cup really changed a lot for me when the Springboks won. And then from there on, uh, it was just 2011, I think was the year changing it for me, feeling well, you know what? Um, I might stand a chance. Uh, that's that's what something I, I want to aim for and to to work towards. So, so that that two thousand and seven, uh, I get the feeling like that's that was kind of like an inspiration. Like you saw it and you were like, you know what? Uh, actually, I, I want to do that. I, I'm gonna pursue that, and 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 that's what basically just maybe inspired you from from what it sounds like. Am I right in saying so? Yeah, definitely. Um, awesome, awesome. For me, it wasn't about being mediocre all the time. Uh, I, I wanted to do something different as well. Um, just being there wasn't enough. And uh, uh, 2011 when Albano equaled the try scoring record with John Aloma, I felt like, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's someone uh, who, who didn't grow up in the, in the best of circumstances as well. And he went out and proved the world wrong in, in doing that and playing yeah. rugby. And, uh, I felt like that was a big motivation for me as well. Not just him, but the whole of the South African team, I think, from yeah. uh, everything I had to, to do and to get over, to get there, to get to a win after a lot of years. So I feel that was a big inspiration for me. Awesome, awesome. So so for, for anyone watching as well, uh, especially youngsters, it is so important to watch the game, you know, but the live games that you can get to, 
um, games on TV because that's where your inspiration comes from, isn't it? So that just proves because you were so inspired. You thought, you know, I want to do that. And then you end up doing it. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's just that's <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And the fact that you, you know, you, you went to a, a school, a smaller school in Namibia, but it's still a powerhouse. I, I, I generally feel like, uh, you know, that area always produced really good rugby players. Uh, either good flankers, ridiculous, fl like flank, Namibia is blessed with amazing flankers as well. But um, man, just all round, you know, just all round. So it's, um, I was gonna, I was, I was gonna tap into. Did you always just play rugby, or was there any other sports that interested you? Any other activities growing up? Do you think? Do you know what I actually like this? I'm gonna keep myself busy with uh, cricket, football, what, whatever. What is there any other hobbies that we should that we could know of? <laughs> yeah, um, I, I did a bit of track at school as well, and uh, my my dad always told me how fast he was. So. We'd go out every afternoon and play. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He had to prove himself, though. I didn't believe just these words. <laughs> uh, we went out, I had a, a few sprints. Um, the kids coming to the farm, working here, the kids visiting. We always had races. So when I grew up, when I got a bit older, it was something for me to work, work towards. Um, seeing our by now, seeing the quick guys, I mm. felt like track was one of those things you need. So I did you a need, bit of right. 100, 200, 400 at school. Um, and I also played a bit of cricket. Um, right. <laughs> I'm my only child. So for me, kicking uh -huh. the ball about wasn't that awesome when you have to catch it yourself the whole time. True, true. Um, true. <laughs> imaginary uh, defenders aren't that good. <laughs> 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 so you, you usually end up scoring a lot more tries. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great, isn't it, to use your imagination as a kid. You know, I, I can relate to that. I, I just, just want to switch my light on. Um, no, I can, I can definitely, um, you know, uh, relate to, you know, using your imagination as well. I... Well, I, I, Daryl and Sergio, obviously, my two brothers, they are five, they are like five and four years younger than me. So I was kind of like the only child as well for, for some yeah. time. So I had to use my imagination a lot. Do you know what I mean? Like, like just imagine there's people watching and making the crowd noises and stuff. So I, I get what you're saying. I absolutely, I get what you're saying. Um, so, so you played a bit of cricket. Do you feel that's really helped you playing, like running at, uh, in athletics? And also playing a bit of cricket, working on the coordination. Do you feel that's really helped now that you're playing, now that you actually obviously throwing your weight full on in rugby? Do you feel like that's made you a, rugby, a better rugby player? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I feel track plays a big part. Um, <laughs> probably not when you're a prop. <laughs> but uh, for the back line, I think uh, <laughs> track, track plays a big role. <laughs> And uh, also cricket, I think it gives you a lot of ball sense. Um, mm -hmm. I quite enjoy. I, I wasn't as good at batting because I didn't have someone bowling to me, but I was quite <laughs> right. good at bowling. <laughs> <laughs> so, I feel like the, the the general ball skills from cricket as well helps a lot. I think rugby is a very adaptive sport. Whether you do wrestling or any other sport. You can always incorporate it into rugby. So I think any mm. type of different sport you do helps. But for me, uh, uh, track and cricket played a big role. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Anyone out there, like I always come back to, please try out different sports, multi sports, multi sports. As you can hear from the man himself, you know, he's played, he's played uh, different, different sports growing up, and, and, and it's definitely shown, you know, like how it can help you. Uh, I can relate to that as well. So no, definitely, um, that's uh, that's a good point. The next, the next, uh, the next thing I was going to ask um, is, you know, your school rugby. Uh, what what was the experience like for you playing school rugby in Namibia? Um, it was <laughs> my experience was probably different from uh, schools, uh, people living in cities. Um, going um, playing against schools with much larger numbers. I think we had quite an advantage with everyone being in a boarding school, being in a hostel. We live 24-7 together. Um, we know what each other is thinking the whole time. Um, it also plays a part in having grudges as well, but we're always a bunch of friends. And uh, I think from a small school, it plays a big role that uh, you should be a, a brotherhood going on the team. So that was uh, quite one of the challenges. 
Some of them were driving long distances to play against other teams. <laughs> wow. Um, so, so, so when you say when you say long cool. distance, so sorry to interrupt you. When you say long distance, please tell people what what do you mean by that? When you say long distance. <laughs> Well, it definitely depends. Uh, when we drive to our capital city from the school, it's about 300 kilometers. So it would be like with the bus, say, a uh, four hour, four and a half hour drive. <laughs> okay. Ouch. So on a bus. It was quite yeah. different. We got some sandwiches on the bus on the way there for lunch, and then we rock up to the game. <laughs> Maybe sometimes get a flat tire or the bus breaks down, so you'll rock up uh, about an hour and a half late. <laughs> yes. But uh, all, all part of the experience, that were, that's what makes you grow. Um, being adaptable is one of those things, you know. I like, I like the fact that you use the word adaptable because I think rugby is all about, you know, being able to be flexible and to be able to adapt. Um, I'm just hearing this cracking sound. Can you hear? Can you, you can hear me clearly, right? I just wanted to, yeah, yeah, to, to yeah, check. Yeah, yeah. I'm just hearing yeah. a bit of a cracking sound. But anyway, no, that that just shows you know you've got to prepare for the unexpected. You know, like if something happens, then you go with it. It's all good. You know, so I'm I'm uh, I'm quite I'm really impressed with uh, you know when I played for Ventura High School, like I'm talking about almost 100 years ago. <laughs> we traveled we traveled down i think to kirkman uh yes. oh. we, we yes. traveled the day before or something like that or early in the morning like we get there you know like it's early enough but not i not really had to go on the same day like and play that far and then come back a lot i, I we didn't have to do that a lot so it was all right i remember when we went to wolfish bay we stayed, we, we, we actually went, yeah, that was the early one, super early, you know, and I'm obviously from Wolfish Bay, so you're more excited if you go to places where you know you've got family and friends. <laughs> so we go to places, you know, because of the excitement. But so, so I was also going to touch on what type of, uh, what type of um, personally challenges did you have to overcome playing school rugby? Besides obviously having flat tires, uh, you know, like he had to deal with with the team, but as a as a player, was there any challenges that you that you still remember that what, where you had to dig deep just to see? Whoa, I'm gonna have to really learn from this and then and then get over it. Um. Oh well, we were our school is quite um, academic orientated, so we'd leave half the school probably and. Just like when school finishes or say second off the second break, you'll leave for the game. And the next morning when the school starts at seven, the teacher expects you homework must be finished. You must be prepared for the day. So I think that was one of the big things. <laughs> one of the big things was um, also not having a lot of rugby players in our school. Um, when I was at school, we were throw, from grade one till grade 12, about 350 children. So wow. it's not that that big pool to pick from. We um we usually don't have a lot of matrix playing in the team. So a personal challenge I think was uh, playing at a young age for against older guys. So we didn't have a, enough players. So I started playing at 16 for my school's first team for the under 19, under 18 team. Best stuff. Best stuff. So you you would have been yeah. playing first Super League. Uh, I take it Super League first team rugby for three years. Well, am I right in think so? Yes, 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 yes. About three years. That, that, that's, that's tough, that. It must have been. It's, it's quite a challenge. Um, you're, you're yet to develop and uh, you're playing against guys with biceps twice the size of... True. Oh, my goodness. When I was young, uh, I got tackled in one game and uh, I broke my shoulder and it kept dislocating. So I had to get a soldier, oh. shoulder... Uh, surgery when I was 16 and I think that was a big challenge for me personally um, wasn't enough to keep me from playing rugby afterwards though. so <laughs> just had to go out there and prove it's, a point um, um, so, so, so you had a, you had a ser it sounds like you had a serious injury that you obviously had to overcome but a lot of guys get an injury like that at a young age and then they, they kind of like just drift off 
and you you went on the other side you you got over the other mountain because you ended up obviously just running with it if, you know even at such a young age which is that's why i was asking that type of question was there any setbacks challenges like it's it's good that you've mentioned that you've had a serious operation but you managed to you know come back stronger um that, that i mean it's not always it's not always easy especially operation how long were you out for so it was um in the middle of the year and i, I missed out like the second half of the season um wasn't it wasn't that good our team played in a quarter and semi-final it was quite a big achievement for us and i had to miss out on those um but it Jeez. was it was good the day before the surgery i saw saw the two doctors um one namibia and one south african doctor and the, the south african doctor asked me like how i got my injury and i told them through rugby and they asked me why I want a, a serious inj- uh, surgery to fix my shoulder. And I told him I wanted to play some more rugby. And uh, he actually <laughs> measured me. And he looked at me and he said, um, you're, t- you're not taller than me. I don't know why you want to keep playing rugby. Uh, and uh, I think I found that is a big motivation for me. To <laughs> awesome. Yeah. No, you, you've got a big heart. It sounds like you've got a big heart. Man. And, and I like that. I, I absolutely, I like that. because. It's uh, what's the saying? It's not the it's not the size of the dog. But it's the what? It's the fight. I think something to do with yeah, the fight in the box. The size of the dog's about the fight. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. I, I um, when you playing, when you what, when you was watching, it looks like you don't. You're very confident going forward. You know, you're very aggressive with the ball in hand and very confident, like you mean it. And I always say, you know, when I'm coaching, I always say to the guys that I'm working with, when you run, run like your life depends on it. But I think from now on, I'm going to use an example. I'm going to pull up a clip of you and show them, <laughs> run run with purpose. <laughs> run like Andre. <laughs> he runs like, you know, he flip on one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if they pull the stone wall, you run and get to the other side. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's class. Yes, yes, love you. it, love it, man. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Honestly, um, I was gonna ask you as well. You, you know, because um, you've shared quite a bit, obviously now uh, school rugby, um, setbacks, and and I was gonna ask you, what is your drive? What's your purpose? Why do you, why do you do? What do you do? Or why do you do what you, you know, like playing rugby? What is your inner purpose? Why do you do it? I think it started seeing people achieving way more than they were expected to when they grew up in not the most fortunate circumstances, as I've mentioned before. Mm. And I think for me, my whole philosophy is about not living a mediocre life. I want to do something <laughs> something above average. And I feel like rug- playing rugby for me is a, a great measuring point um, playing rugby is, as we've said, you have to be adaptable and there's so much more behind the scenes going on to rock up to a Saturday game, playing a full game, coming off injury free and being able to do that weekend off the weekend. Um, but I think apart from that, the, f- the friendships you make on the field, off the field, right. Right. That plays a big role for me. Um, being an only child, being alone, I'm always keen for making new friends, meeting new people. So that's one of the most exciting parts. And then my family supporting me all the way. My dad, most probably my wow. biggest coach, my biggest supporter as well. Um, he will be dead honest about if I had a good game or a bad game. But that's the stuff that motivates me. Um, mm. I remember playing at school one game and uh, I scored... I, <laughs> Probably my only hat trick in life I scored. Um, and I came off the field and I walked straight to my mom and she had tears that's in her eyes. And right? That's something that, I don't know, I take that into every game. <laughs> Being able to make my parents proud as well. Mm. <laughs> mm. Because obviously they've, they've invested a lot over the years in you. And they've, I mean, I must be so proud for them to see you just doing what you love. Uh, and the fact that they've they they they've contributed and they've helped you to 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 give you the best start to be able to you know to do what you need to do, uh, and for the fact that you're mentioning you know your dad and your mom, I, I was gonna ask you any role models 
But I, I, I take it you, you've just touched on that anyway. By, by saying your dad, you know, you, you speak highly, obviously, of your dad, which is great. Uh, you know, it's important to have a good support system. Um, I was also going to touch on mental health. Mike, I just wanted to ask you mental on the mental side of things. What's your thoughts on, on, on that? Now, we also in this, I think this is the week of mental health, you know, like like for men especially. What's your thoughts on that? Men, you know, as a as a rugby player, man, what what does it mean to be mentally strong for you? Yeah, also, um, as you said, this uh, this the week of mental health awareness, and I mentioned mm. friends, and I think that plays a big part, whether you're on the same team or on different teams. But I, I think mm -hmm. especially on the same teams because you know each other on a personal level, uh, friendships plays a big role in rugby. You don't have to just be friends to be able to play rugby on the field, but off the field as well. Um, there, there's some tough times sometimes. As I've mentioned, injuries are one of those things. Um, and having a friend just coming over to you asking if everything's all right or just coming over, bringing you some food, having a good chat with you, having a good laugh, that plays a massive role. So I think for mental health, the friendships you form on and off the field, having an injury, having a random person you played against, messaging you, yeah. telling you, um, I just want to tell you, I'm thinking of you, based of luck in the yeah. recovery, speed recovery camp. <laughs> that plays a massive role, having those encouraging words. And that's the kind of stuff that carries you through through tough times, being yeah. not mentally completely there where you want to be all the time. Good, very good. Uh, well, well said, because... I was, uh, when was it, yesterday, when, uh, yeah, yeah, yesterday, I was invited uh, to a school here in the island um, to come and always talk about yourself and your experiences, but also about the mental side of things, and uh, that's why I was just wanting to touch on that, but I think you, you've, you've said it. Um, a lot of people assume, you know, if, especially if you're a man, you know, you've got it all figured out, or you need to know what you're doing, and yeah, if you do, then brilliant. You know, then you can be, a, you obviously can help other people. But if uh, you don't have to have everything figured out. Um, so I was just going to say that um, if you, if you, if you see someone uh, that they need help, it's not, you know, it seems weak, doesn't it? It seems weak, but it's actually strong. So I'm just going to check, Yandre, I'm just going to check my sound. I believe there's a, a, a bit of a sound, sound check, just one second. Uh, it's, still, it's still making a sound. It's still making a sound. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, then. I'm going to try and talk without, without more. But it's still, it's, I can hear it's, uh, it's still messing the sound. But we'll, we'll, we'll crack on, we'll crack on. Um, so, so yeah, thank you for touching on, on the mental side of things. Uh, I think that's a very good point. The, the next thing I was going to ask you, um, you know, being a rugby player, do you feel that, that you know it's improved you as a person? How do you how do you find it? Yeah, uh, I, I definitely agree. I think rugby. Rugby played, apart from my parents and the way they brought me up, I feel rugby played the majority role in my life of the person who I am today. Um, a lot of setbacks, a lot of disappointments. Usually, it it gets you where you are. Um, rugby isn't always the high life and the, the flashy life, as some people think. There's, there's some setbacks as well. And... Uh, you have to work through those, and I think that prepares you for life as well. Um, you can control or try to control a game for 80 minutes, but when you go into life, it's 24-7. And I feel like rugby, being able to form friendships, being humble, being nice to people, being able to make friends afterwards, the way you treat your coaches, the way you treat people that's supposed to help you, say, when you go to a hotel and stuff, um, treating those people with respect as well, I think that plays a, a massive role. And most importantly for me, I think rugby 
like taught me to have the utmost respect for each and every one and everything as well. Um, because it makes you weak if you don't give someone the respect they, they, they deserve. So I think rugby mm -hmm. definitely played a massive role in my, my development to the person I am today. Wow. Wow. That Honestly, that was a clear And the way you're saying it, I, I love that because I'm always one who goes on about attitude. You know, if you can change your attitude, we always want people to change, don't we? We're like, oh, I can't you just change. But I'd rather now look at myself and let me change. Let me, let me work on my own attitude. Then hopefully that person's attitude also will change towards yes, me. Yes. No, that type of thing. So I've learned a lot, like through rugby that I have to be, I have to exercise humility and kindness. And it's not weak. That's what I was trying to say earlier. It's been very powerful. So, I'm on the, yeah. I, I, honestly, I just have to say um, for anyone listening, you know, any youngsters that want to be involved in, in say, for instance, in, in, uh, in, in elite sports, you know, elite, elite sports, it, it's always about, you know, it's always dominated by very powerful egos. But if you can bring all of that together with humility, then you will be successful. So that was well said. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I'm having so much fun, honestly. I hope you, um, you don't mind me showing some. Um, any two or three, uh, I've, I've also wanted to know, please give us two or three reasons why, why you actually like being in a rugby team and not play golf or, you know, where you isolated or tennis. What, what, what makes you like, yeah, you know what? I'm with my brothers. No, I don't know their own thing. If, you, if, you, if you can only even give one thing, you know, add to what you already said. Well, I'll, I'll keep coming back to this point, but the friendships, it, it's massive for me, really. Um, being able to go out with friends after a training session and having a coffee, playing a round of golf, just doing things together as well, the, the togetherness of being in a team is something completely different. And as you've said, <laughs> you, say, you said you have to be humble and humility. And I think that's one of those things in the team. You can't think too much about yourself. You have to be able to work with other people and give them the credit they deserve. And you have to be able to give someone else compliments as well and bring them up and they'll do the same for you. So in a team sport, what you give is what you receive. And I think that is massive for me. Brilliant. What you give is what you're going to receive. I love that. It's like, um, like you know, when you when you when you plant something, you water it, and then it'll give back to what you've planted, isn't it? When you put in what you're going to get out. Yes. You know, or it's the same like in the mind. Like if you think negative, you that's what you'll get. If you be positive, yes. then people will respond positive. And, and and that's why I'm really really enjoying this chat, man. You're just hitting it. Point with it. <laughs> 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 um, we, should have you, we should have you on again if you if you're not too busy. You know what I mean? Like at some point, maybe in the in the future, if you don't mind, I'm already asking. <laughs> no. no, definitely, I'm enjoying it as much as well. So I'm looking forward to the next one. <laughs> the, the next one. No, definitely brilliant. Um, so let's start on. Let's touch on. So you've played school rugby in Namibia, and you've come through that. And then you ended up playing for the junior teams. You know, like, what was the experience playing in the junior setup for Namibia, like representing Namibia at the junior level, like under 20 and, and so on? And, you know, do you mind, do you mind uh, uh, collaborating on that? Okay. So uh, when, I, when I was at school, we still had Prairie Week, luckily. Um, as the same as in your years, recently mm -hmm. they've taken it away, and I feel... They, uh, they've taken us uh, something big away from Namibia rugby, not being able to play Craven Week. And I really feel for the boys playing school rugby at the moment. So I was fortunate enough to play Craven Week and uh, I felt like that was an amazing platform to showcase myself, my team, my country. Everyone's underestimating Namibia always because no one really knows where it is. <laughs> it's always 
oh, where's Namibia? And you have to tell people, oh, it's the neighboring country to South Africa, or we come from Africa, stuff like that. So for me, playing in the Craven Week was massive. Being able to represent my country, being able to measure myself at a higher platform than schools rugby. And then from going on to under-19, playing to qualify for the under-20 World Trophy in Zimbabwe. Um, luckily, we won that year. Qualified, that was a big moment for me. Being able to be part of that team that put Namibia on the map to mm. something greater, to develop the rugby. I wasn't thinking that much of it as I am at the moment, but when I reflect on <laughs> what uh, shaped me to be the rugby player, I, am today, I think those, those games, those days played a big role. And playing under 20 rugby was a, a big step up for me from what I was used to. I was used to playing schools rugby, uh, playing against smaller schools, bigger schools, but nothing compared to playing international level. Uh, we went out to our first game playing under 20 uh, World Trophy. We played our first game against the US. And it was massive for me standing there singing the national anthem, getting goosebumps all over. For me, that was similar to South Africa singing the national anthem, playing in a World Cup. Yeah. So I was just, yeah, yeah. I felt like as I was standing there, I felt like I realized I was living the dream. I was living my dream. So playing at a junior level representing the country, we won, uh, we won that game by one point. And I felt like that was the biggest thing that <laughs> could have happened to me at the moment. <laughs> Gee. And, and, and where was it again? Um, the tournament? Uh, sorry, we, I think we've just lost in there for a second. For the, the signal has been obviously not been great uh, on the island. So um, we'll see if we can bring him in again. One second. Uh, do, 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 let me just have a look. Stop. Stop. Yep, there you go. Just refresh. I was just saying, uh, we'll see if we can bring you back in. Can you hear me? You can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, that's better. Yes, that's better. I was just saying when it dropped, I was just saying, uh, obviously, where, where I'm, where I am, the, the signal on the island is, is not always great. But uh, we want to say to everyone, thank you for the support. Thank you for tuning in, for listening, for sending messages, uh, and also for your patience, you know, for, you know, following us and, and, and yeah, we've got to be flexible and adapt. You know, if something happens, we just crack on. And that's what life is all about. You just got to crack on when things don't go your way. Um, but yeah, you were saying, so your, your experience at under 20, I, I just, when you, when you mentioned that, what came to me was when you were under 16, playing first in rugby, I feel maybe that's really helped you to to be able to make that step up and actually deal with it better. Am I am I right saying so? You the fact that you've managed yeah, to play three years. That. Um, being at a bit of a younger age and being played against uh, or being under a lot more pressure, um, mm -hmm. having to perform against someone bigger and stronger than you, uh, definitely helped to shape me for, for the future. And mm. being there, I wasn't as small. <laughs> so, <laughs> underestimate us, underestimate me, underestimate my team. We're going to show you what we're made of. Uh, we were born to play rugby in Namibia. So, that was one of the, the mm. biggest step up we had to make. And I felt yeah. like we did we did quite good. Quite good. That's, that's, um, that's brilliant. And like you said, it's a shame that now... The Craven Week, you know, it's slightly been taken away and, you know, for especially for the guys that's supposed to be going through that cycle. Um, but, uh, man, it's, I can remember my, when I went to Craven Week was in, in Port Elizabeth uh, and I, I was playing outside center and my my center, my center partner was, was Doug Berger. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, he was he was a flyer. He was a really good flyer in a, in an inside center. You know, he, he um very skillful. Uh, obviously, his strongest his superpower has always been um not to talk about Jack now, but just to mention that his superpower was always his defense tackling. When when he you know he 
when you line someone up, that's it. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> you'll know what's coming. <laughs> so yeah, I, re I remember, yeah, going on the bus, uh, you know, all the way to Port Elizabeth. Uh, just just to reflect, you you were talking about bus journeys. We we ended up driving all the way, you know, to South Africa, and then we had to stay over at someone's farm actually in South Africa <laughs> on the way there for one night, and it was pretty cool because we were we made big fire and barbecue. And, sleeping in sleeping bags you know it's pretty cool it just brought us closer so by the time we get uh, you know get going the next day uh, another couple of i don't know how many hours to get to port elizabeth but uh, yeah it was a brilliant experience um the the other thing was oh, maybe, maybe is uh, to tell the kids one day oh definitely definitely <laughs> um yeah it's it's uh, i mean it, the way things are changing now as well it's like Back then, there wasn't Instagram, there wasn't, you know, phones where, you know, the, the, the phones people had didn't even have a camera. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like, <laughs> I can imagine people going away now, every, every other minute, you know, you can see what people are doing. So you can, you can people can yeah. be with you a long way. But back then, it was uh, a phone booth. Uh, hi Ma, I'm uh, I'm all right. We've uh, we've arrived in Port Elizabeth. <laughs> Telephone card. Go and get a phone card. What's the code again? <laughs> Do you know I mean? Yeah, I know. Now it's the uh, what's up? Like, Boom! I'm here. Do you know what I mean? You have to buy a like these days, and you have to put it on like a, like a credit card, and you have to put it into the phone booth, and you'll be able to talk to your parents. Oh, <laughs> Some challenging goodness. times that. It wasn't like yeah, yeah. video calling your mom and dad, FaceTiming them, and like, Dad, look what we're up to at the moment. You had to explain everything. <laughs> true. <to you. laughs> true, true, true. Yeah, it's crazy how, how it's uh, everything has just changed so quickly, you know. But um, the other that 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 comes to my next question. I was going to ask, um, you know, we've talked about obviously the the school career in in Namibia at under twenty level. Uh, is there any? I know along the way there must have been quite a few coaches that. That played their part, but is there maybe one or two coaches that you could, even up to senior level, is there any other coaches that you would like to just maybe not talk about, but mention in in a way what you feel have really really contributed to to, to, to helping you to what what you were doing now? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think. <laughs> When I was in uh, school, uh, I was uh, <laughs> I was playing under seven rugby. Uh, we we weren't that, that big school, so we had a only one rugby field, and everyone had to play the sports weekend on it. So the the younger children, the under sevens, eights, nines, having to modify the smaller field, had to play super early in the morning so the field could be clear for for the older children to play later on. And rugby is a winter sport, so you'll be there barefoot on the field and it was I know where this is going <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we didn't have a uh, like a permanent coach for the team so every kid's father had a turn to coach the team for one game and uh, this particular morning my dad was the the coach for the team and I stood with my hands in my pockets like after five minutes since the game started I was still standing with my hands in my pockets <laughs> And a, a, a kid ran around me, and I, I already tried to shoulder him without taking my hands out of my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad pulled me aside and told me, "Hey, you, st you should start playing rugby, but take your hands out of your pockets." And I, I was super negative. I told him, "Dad, my feet are hurting, my hands are hurting. It's cold. Oh. I don't want to play rugby." And uh, it was still those days where he got a hiding. So my dad grabbed me by the collar and gave me. <laughs> two shots on the bum and he told me to go back there and play some rugby. <laughs> so <laughs> I think <laughs> that was the that was the turning point for my career. <laughs> Not wanting that same same effect. Um, but throughout that I had a first team coach, uh Johan Adrianza, who mm -hmm. just believed in me and I think that plays a massive role for every rugby player. If you have a coach believing in you, that's mm -hmm. something something good. So I had him coaching me um he, he coached me in craven week as well i was very fortunate to have my first team coach as my craven week coach as well right um i had an under under 21 coach um craig beepster uh, in uh, cape town who did exactly the same because he believed in me. i was 
willing to give him everything. Um, mm. Coach Roger Thompson, he was the guy that believed in me and got me involved in Namibian rugby. Um, up until Phil Davies, who believed enough in me to take me to the World Cup. So definitely quite a lot of coaches that played a role in, in my development, in my journey to where I am at the moment. And I'm very thankful for them just having faith in me. That's um, that's brilliant, the way you're reflecting, where you started off under seven all the way through to seniors. Then that just shows people's got to stay connected with their journey. You know what I've realized? Um, we don't, as people, we sometimes don't embrace our own story enough. We... We we don't we don't when I say embrace I mean like we don't um, we don't take ownership of it you know we kind of like drawn back a bit when it comes to our own story but I think your story is brilliant like the fact that you can reflect all the way from under seven I I remember playing bare feet and the ground you know before it's quite early in the morning and the sun's not even properly out and it's kind of like it's still frost and it it cuts your you know your your feet like you've got to crack on you know it's it's freezing but as soon as you know as soon as it comes out that you know you put to go i remember playing at euros euros primary oh my God. <laughs> when i came to england i told people you know um do you know when you know we, we've got to we've got to wait until until we under 14 when we start playing with boots and they thought yes. you know how could you not play with boots at, at a young age it's like no, you've got to wait your turn. You've got to. It's something you've got to <laughs> work towards. But obviously, over here the the, the winters are really wet, and they you need boots at a young age. But it's nothing for them to have five pairs of boots at the age of nine now. Do you know what I mean? Like it's crazy. Do you know what I mean? Like obviously it's different time and so on. But I um I if I may ask you something off off topic. Sure. <laughs> boots wise. What's your favorite boot? Are you a, are you a fast guy, oh, fast guy, or you just if you just like your you know your plain black boot that you need to clean or what what <laughs> what do you like to go for? <laughs> if I may well, ask you, <laughs> I remember when I got to the age of uh, playing boots or uh, with boots, Francia Ojo was quite a big sensation. He played with uh, purple Nikes with some yellow Nike sign and writing on it. And it blew my mind. <laughs> and I wasn't fortunate enough oh, to get a similar pair, though. But uh, throughout the years, I've tried and tested a few pairs. And it came down to um, currently the previous tournament I played. I played with uh, Mizunos, <laughs> Golden Mizunos. <laughs> so probably a bit oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> You have to live up to the expectation of golden boots. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> what is your dad? So what is your dad? What is, <laughs> what is your dad say when he told him you got all the boots? Oh, my dad! My dad isn't a big fan of playing colored boots. He believes in playing with plain black boots, black laces. You clean your boots before every game. You wipe, wipe them with a cloth. You clean off the dirt. That's my, my dad's proper old school and that way. And uh, when I showed him showed him the golden boots, he told me it looked like a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, okay. Because, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I had to ask. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> Sorry, but this is good. That's class. Oh, my goodness. Um, oh. <laughs> I'm having so much fun, man. Thanks, thanks for, for hey, oh, the awesome thank vibes. You, hey, oh, really enjoying yeah. you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> I hope everyone else is um that's following. I hope you guys are having a, an awesome time with us. Um, man, this this guy's story is is is, is brilliant. <laughs> and um, now that you know, if you see him with golden boots, you know why. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's <laughs> fast guy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Speed. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Things. You have to have cool boots and a good hairstyle. So, <laughs> in a good hairstyle, it got, it's gonna go with me. I know. I know. I see. Like that. That leads me. That leads me to my next. Um, my next question. I, I wanted to know, um, the ambition for Namibia. 
um, you know, pushing on. So you in the senior setup, um, what was your, I've asked this before, but I would like to know from you, what was your first, do you remember your first training session when you got called up to the senior side? That like, like, that, like the test, the test side, not, not, um, you know, like the, the bigger group or the, like, like, like the test side, what, what was your training session like? Do you remember um, that? Oh, oh, clear as day. Uh, <laughs> I rocked up to, uh, to, to the training session and um, I, I pride myself in being there first and leaving last. And I arrived mm -hmm. and all these players from overseas was already there, like uh, uh, Johan Dessel, uh, Thorsten van Jaasveld, mm -hmm. uh, PJ van Lille. All those guys were already there, <laughs> already boots mm -hmm. on, already warming up, doing their thing. <laughs> And uh, I was completely intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of the 2015 World Cup, I was still at school. I was matric, and mm. I watched the Namibia New Zealand New Zealand game. And I was so proud at that moment. John Dazel scored the try, and the team yeah, just yeah. showing their true grit, mm. <laughs> being the underdog, and just mm. not caring about what other people say. Uh, mm. playing way above expectation and John scored a try and I felt like if he can score a try against New Zealand mm. <laughs> the possibilities are endless for us as Namibian rugby players mm. and rocking up to the first training session those guys already being there setting an example I was really intimidated nervous but it helped me to push myself to a more professional uh, higher quality player level so <laughs> one of the Best memories of my life. Driving from home, knowing this was going to be my first, like, senior rugby training session, and be, having those guys around it was just amazing. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, it does help. It does help. You know, when you come into a new environment and people are welcoming, and it, they make you feel like you know you part of it, and they want you to be part of it. Uh, there's nothing worse than you come into an environment and you just feel like quite isolated even though people are friendly and all but you can feel mm, this, you know something is not right that's the worst thing ever but uh luckily from what it sounds like you you know you've had a good a good good experience and that obviously helped with you going forward so now you've uh, you've played for namibia and then you had to work hard and then boom you're in the world cup squad please tell us about that what was your experience then I can tell you it wasn't easy. <laughs> um, a lot of hard work and dedication. I think uh, a lot of people look at being going to the World Cup as just, it is this massive honor, but it didn't come falling out of the sky into your lap. Mm -hmm. The amount of hard work, the dedication, um, everything going into it, being able to be ready to be able to play, not getting injured, being fit enough, being able to go weekend after weekend, and then being ready to show up to one of the biggest sporting events in the world was, for me, one of the best and most thoughtful journeys of my life. I definitely learned a lot more than I did in previous journeys. Going into this, having the amount of guys, setting the example, mm making new friends and just walking the whole road from making your debut to going to the World Cup with them was just an unbelievable experience. It's very hard to be able to explain this to someone. Mm, <laughs> being, mm. being able to explain this, like, I, I get, I won't say emotional, but I do feel mm. emotional about this. Being able to reflect back on that and thinking of all the friends I've made and the people walking the road with me, having players in the team, having coaches, S&C staff motivating you, coming over to you, like asking you what's wrong. You tell them, oh, I don't feel like this is going well. And then going out of their way to help you to be the best self, <laughs> it played, it was massive for me. And then going there, playing against... <laughs> Some of the top teams in the world. Ooh. <laughs> Tell us about that. 
<laughs> Tell us about that. Please do. Um, yo, being able to rock up there and to be treated like you're a celebrity, <laughs> yeah, I must say it's difficult not to let it go to your head as quickly. Mm -hmm. You were know, quite a chill shock in the beginning. And uh, wow. for me, standing, <laughs> playing my first taste in the World Cup, walking down the line, uh, I've told the story to quite a few people, but I uh, walked out of the changing room. I was number 23, so I'm in the back of the line, and I only see blue jerseys, and the two tunnels, like, you come facing each other, and I only see blue jerseys, and I saw some, some black jerseys sticking out from the side, and then Ricky Wani being number 23 as well, and we walk up face to face to each other, like, sizing each other up, standing next to each other. <laughs> that's a goosebump feeling you're like okay i'm ready i'm ready and then I'm they getting, start playing the drums goosebumps, <laughs> no? <laughs> they started playing the drums and you hear the guy counting down three two one you know, jog out onto the field the crowd's ecstatic the music's mm. playing flames shooting out mm. from the sides <laughs> knowing everything's everything you've been working for your whole lives mm. it all mm. comes down to this moment mm. and just absorbing everything <laughs> are one of the most unforgettable experiences of my life. <laughs> wow. So 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 just rewind quickly back to being on a bus, sometimes getting a flat tire, driving three hours, four hours to go and play a game of rugby, arriving there late, driving back another three or four hours back home, be at school the next morning, you know, all that. And then walking out in a stadium, 50, I don't know, 60, 70,000 people watching and obviously millions watching on tv and then you know you you start you sing your anthem the national anthem and you start thinking you know you start the emotions start coming you start thinking about those times like i'm here now like what you know what i mean like <laughs> how so so you faced Dhaka, right yes <laughs> four years before that you were in you were in matric last year of school and you watch Namibia face the hacker for the first time, the senior side. Yes. Four years later, you find yourself standing there doing the same thing, right? So what was that like for you? What was what was it like facing the hacker? Was it what you expected? Sorry, do I, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Sorry, sorry, I just got out to bed. It's okay, it's okay. Um, yeah, I was I was no. asking. I don't know if you can you, did you hear the question or I, should, only should it? Way. <laughs> say again. I, I only heard half of it. Half away. Okay. I as I said. Um. So four years, the, your last year of school, you're watching the Mobile face the Haka and play the All Blacks for the first time. Four years later, you find yourself standing right there in a stadium packed out, millions of people watching, and you facing the Haka. What was that moment like for you? facing the hacker. Was it what you expected? <laughs> I think it was more more than I expected. Um, watching watching the hacker on the TV for every rugby enthusiast is one of those things you you said 10 minutes early prior to the game watching the TV because you want to see that. And it symbolizes so much. And then just facing there, taking it in, facing it. And you walk off the field and you just you know, you just think to yourself, the amount of blessings you've received to be able to do that from being seven years old and doing the arc of your friends on stage for the <laughs> class of clashes or mm -hmm. uh, before the big brag before a game and thinking you were mm -hmm. one of the big dogs and standing there and facing it, you get really humbled mm -hmm. and then you just know you've been truly blessed being able to go out and be able to live in that current current moment that few mm. seconds <laughs> wow wow that's um that's uh it's uplifting and it's in, inspirational because i i bet a lot of young guys dream of you know i want to play for Namibia one day i want to do that i want to play alongside uh Yandre, you know they might be still at school. How does that make you? How does that make you feel? Do you know what I mean? Like four years from now, three years from now, 
Yeah, some guys that's looking up to you, <laughs> do you know what I mean? They'll be running, starting <laughs> air past the ball, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, uh, it's crazy how, how, you know, how it goes, but um, it's just fantastic to see that, you know, they like to hear your story once again, to come back to the focus of, you know, where, where you're from, um, growing up on a farm, love making friends, love buying in, being part of a team, you know, trusting the process, having a good support system, mom and dad, you know, instilling good values in you and just supporting you all the way. And then coaches, I'm just quickly reflecting like what we've talked about and and just, just look at the outcome, you know, in Japan, 2019, boom, you've, you've made the World Cup squad and you've played in the World Cup. So it's something that no one can take away from you. And not many there's 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 so many rugby players in the world but you are one of the few who could play at the world cup how does that make you feel definitely one of the biggest privileges you'll ever ever have in life is to be able to play in the world cup and people might think oh it's namibia and we don't have a lot of people and that's true and that's fine as well but to be able to think you're one of the 20 best teams in the mm. world, having that opportunity, it's priceless. It's priceless. There you go. That's that's the that's well said. Priceless. You can't you you can explain, but unless someone actually goes through it themselves, you know, it's it's quite difficult. It's quite difficult. But um, talk about World Cup. Do you do you feel like you want to push on for 2023? Do you, do you for Namibia, if I may ask? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think uh, it's one of those experiences that once you've once you've had the experience, it's something you want to go back to. Um, <laughs> being able to measure yourself against those those big dogs, being uh, able to mm-hmm. measure yourself on a, the world's biggest rugby platform, it's something that probably keeps motivating you there is some guys i was privileged enough to play with some players that that has played quite a few few world cups so like mm. uh pj van lil daryl yeah mm. uh the law virginia Yankees. Mm. those guys that played previous world cups and being able to talk to them and ask them what it was like for them and them being able to tell me uh the last one was just as exciting as the first one. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, 2020 is definitely a possibility of really working hard towards it. And hopefully, hopefully we're blessed enough to be there. Awesome, awesome. What's your favorite position now? Before we, before we move on, what's your favorite position? I've, I've been playing a lot of rugby on wing. <laughs> The last yeah. few years, but I do actually prefer outside centre. Any coaches? Any coaches heard? <laughs> any kids hearing that? <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> just, just like you. Uh, outside centre, right? Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool that you you know you're versatile, which is brilliant. Um, I think you'll be quite comfortable at 13. You know, like and your running lines. It's devastating. So yeah, um, gold, golden boots at thirteen with a very sharp <laughs> style, slick hands and speed. What more do you want? <laughs> do you know what, I mean? <laughs> what more do you want? <laughs> what more do you want? That's that's class. That's class. So my next my next point or oh, next question. We've talked about obviously rugby world cup. Uh, and the, the experience, the whole Japan experience. How do you, or from reflection, what was your most memorable moment being in Japan? If you can sum it up, the whole thing, the whole not just rugby but off the pitch as well. I think coming back home and having that experience and sharing it with so many people, and it's the people that will understand. When you talk about it, they'll truly understand the emotion behind it. Um, for me, one memorable moment was definitely going out in the field, facing the That's something big. But 
I have a, I had a friend that went with me to the World Cup. We went to the same school. He was a year older than me, but we went to the same school, played first team together, um, played Crane Week together. He was the Crane Week captain that year. We, our parts both separated a bit of the school, um, came back together, played club rugby, started playing provincial side, started playing for Namibia mm-hmm. together, and then going to the World Cup. And uh, I have this picture of me um, coming from the front, um, shaking his hand and just giving him a hug with the biggest smile I've ever smiled, probably. Just having awesome. that, being able to share that experience with him, like, it mm-hmm. was really special for me. That, that's well, that you shows. told me another guy. It was Adrian Boyce, and he spoke to. Oh, Adrian Boyce, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I was a few weeks uh, ago, so yeah, it, yeah. For me, sharing that moment with him was it was priceless, actually, because mm. it's not usual to be able to mm. be on the same level. And then, yeah, the... yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. No, that's that's um. You know, you you guys, you and Adrian, you've got the same. No, I wouldn't say running style, but the way you run, it looks like you want to run through five people, and you'll get on to the other side. It, it's just it's so aggressive. You know what I mean? Like you, it feels like you have to be just fit just to keep up when you're watching, when you guys take off. You know what I mean? Like what what do you guys do? You know. What did you guys do it like to be able to just have that aggression like when you run? I just like it. Like <laughs> you can't coach it. That's what I'm trying to say. You just can't coach that. You know, when when you run like with full force. Oh man, it's that's, that's what I said to Adrian. That's what I said to Adrian as well. Like and, and it's it's crazy. You guys are coming from the same school and you play together at school. So if I may ask, what were they feeding you? <laughs> what were you guys eating? <laughs> <laughs> just the local hostel food, proper. proper <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, it's <laughs> the key is to have a braai every three days, every two or three days in a week. <laughs> sure, some nice, <laughs> some nice. Uh, you know, the Mabias. I take it you, you, do you, do you prefer chili bites or just normal biltong, beef biltong, or what's your favorite? I, I think. Uh, Chili bites is a bit easier to take with you everywhere. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of chili bites. Yes. Chili bites. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> when, when I go to Namobia, <laughs> on the way to, I think it's Curry Bob or Usokos. I can't remember now. Usokos. There's a boat, there's a st- where you can stop, and there's a boat on yes. shop. Yes, well, I can't, I can't, I can't go past there and not stop there. It's, it's almost like it's a crime. You can't do that. You know what I mean? Especially if you yes. if you're not in the movie, you just have to stop there. Unless you, if you've already got your own belt on or something, you have to stop there. And it's like, you know, it, you just can't get enough. <laughs> they shouldn't call it belt. They should call it uh, yes. eat some more. I I normally say they should call it eat some more because it's just so good. Honestly, <laughs> so good. for anyone, if you wonder what we're talking about, we're talking about um, dry meat that have been specially dried. Uh, it's just and it's spiced up it, with nice flavor and it's just oh, brilliant. Um, I was gonna also ask now for anyone that that don't know of this, uh, Andres played in the World Tense Series or tournament recently that was mm-hmm. uh, hosted um, in Bermuda. Now, normally when people hear Bermuda, they talk, they think about the Bermuda Triangle and like people fly and they don't, you know, they don't don't know what's going on. And please tell people or tell us about the experience in the Tense World Series. What was that? How did that come about? And and, and how did you find it? Um, I was was working on the form. So for me, it was just the same as every rugby player. COVID uh, played a big role in us not being able to play rugby at the moment. And I was uh, came back to the farm and just helping out my dad for the well-being. Um, maybe I was naive to think it will only last a month and then we'll be back to normal. Mm. I was on the farm and um, I had a rugby agent, Sam Lawrence. Mm-hmm. He started talking to me about the 10 series, but I thought with everything going on at the moment, it, 
wouldn't be possible. And then I woke up the Monday morning quite early, um, saw messages from him. I got an email sending through the contract, the flight times. And the next Wednesday, I was on the plane flying to Bermuda. So it happened quite, quite quickly. But for me, it was like not a people... Not a lot of people get the opportunity to play rugby at the moment. Um, mm. Grabbing it with both hands, doing whatever ever is necessary to get on the plane. Mm. Flying there, luckily we didn't disappear in the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, <laughs> <Yes. safely. laughs> Bermuda, right? Um, safely. Um, we were in a hotel with four other teams. Mm. Um, really, really good hotel. The hotel's pool, um, mm. the deck of the pool <laughs> is the beach, the waves breaks onto the deck. So wow. we were practically living in paradise for the last three weeks. <laughs> uh, it felt like it felt wow. like a breakaway from reality for us. Um, there were only four cases prior to when we arrived in Bermuda, right. so they weren't that strict as well. Walking around mm. the hotel premises without uh or not without a mask, but Without mm -hmm. two strict regulations and being able mm -hmm. to make new friends, meet new people, mm -hmm. and with all the social distancing and self isolation going on, <laughs> I was super keen on meeting new people and just <laughs> being able to yeah. talk to everyone. And <laughs> like, uh, how are you? Oh man, yeah. it's so nice to play rugby. <laughs> yeah. Being wow. in someone else's conversation for a change. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. tournament itself, I don't know, the people watching. Um, I don't know how they found it. The people that didn't watch, they they tried to put a twist on rugby. So it was ten aside with some space to score tries, with a bit of physicality, so that bigger mm -hmm. guys can play as well. We had a mm -hmm. twist on the kickoff. You had to kick off from a tee. There was a, a twist on uh, conversions, being different mm -hmm. points from different positions, and it just made it <laughs> that more interesting for me, being able to be part of this experiment, and then being part of this something different and being able to adapt to that and mm. playing rugby when everyone else has to set it home in quarantine. <laughs> yeah, it's, I watched, I watched, I watched it, some of it and there's some big hits and I was like, what was the fitness levels like? Because if I get it, I take it you were keeping yourself fit anyway, because you just don't know, you know, like running on the farm, did it help? Or did you come there and feel like, this is tough? <laughs> you know, like the pace of the game or what was yes. it like for you? Yes, it was uh, It was difficult Difficult coming from the farm going, oh, we only have sand around here. We don't have a proper pitch to train <laughs> on. So, I was so happy to be able to run on some grass. <laughs> it's a lot yes. more efficient. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to pull the sand out of your boots every two or three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. But uh, the fitness levels was tested. Luckily, mm -hmm. they were quite considerate of the fitness levels. So people were keeping themselves fit. That's one of those things. It's uh, You don't know when it's going to start playing rugby. So mm -hmm. they were considerate and uh, they introduced a rule of inconsistent subs like rolling subs. So oh, yeah, you were able subs. to switch on and off the whole time, whether you feel mm -hmm. tired. So good. that lowered the risk of injury and... Mm -hmm. It helped a lot with the fitness levels, especially on the first weekend. It was, you had to be able to adapt, being able to close some space with the quick guys, but also being able to be physical with the big guys in the midfield mm. and mm. with the collisions. So having having rolling subs definitely played a big role. And from the second weekend on, everyone started just buying into having fun in the field. <laughs> And and w I take it um, if you had the opportunity to do that again, you would probably take it. Am I right? <laughs> or would that this be difficult? Is once in a lifetime experiences uh, or mm. experience for me and for the people we talked about. We were on the second day in the on the island. <clears throat> Sorry, and uh, we had a beautiful sunset over the ocean. And one of the guys, were, the team was just sitting there watching the sunset, having a nice chat. Mm. And one of the guys just looked over and was like, guys, we really can't complain. We're living in paradise at the moment. Mm. Mm. So definitely of this experience or this opportunity show, shows, again, 
I'll definitely grab it with both hands and I'll encourage people to work towards that again. They're looking to expand tennis rugby on a very high level, on a bigger scale than this year. So this is an out of this world opportunity. And and the team that you played for, if you wanted to tell everyone the team that you played for, the name, if you don't mind. So we had different teams from different places all over. Uh, we had some British teams and we had some American teams and we had a South African team as well. <clears throat> and I played for the Miami Sun, uh, American team. Funny fact about the team is only one guy from the team is actually from Miami. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we were, all the teams were quite just thrown together, guys. Um, Essex had a few Sevens players, a few Kenyan boys, some guys playing from America. Same with the, the London Royals that Sevens, Sevens National, Sevens players from England mm. that had some guys from America and the same with us. We were from all over. Some guys from Ireland, some guys from England, America. I was from Namibia. Some Fijian guys, some Samoan, Tongan mm. guys. So we were actually quite a mixed bunch. And uh, for me, I wow. think the biggest thing with our team was just the team vibe, everyone being able to just convert that all that different cultures into one Miami Sun culture and just bringing the mm. vibe every game. Wow. Wow, that's um that's fantastic because I I believe you were the only Namibian player playing in the tournament. But we had the coach who's a Namibian who was coaching <laughs> one of the teams. Am I right? Yes. Uh, coach uh, Keith Lensing, he coached the Lansing. London Royals. It was yeah. very, very interesting to have uh, or someone else from Namibia there as well. He stole the spotlight mm. a bit though. But uh today. <laughs> 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 right <laughs> okay no but uh yeah I, that, that's that's a proud that's a proud moment you know we've had, we've had a moving player representing which is always great to see that uh you know people um you know get invited to a tournament like that a world series you know and 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 what what was interesting for me uh was the conversions you can get more points if you kick from halfway like five points yes. and three points from the you know, from the obviously from the sides. Um, yeah, we might see that in the future in 15s. You just don't know. If your team <laughs> needs, you know, a conversion normally is two points. But if your team needs, you know, three points, you can decide that oh, I'm going to kick from halfway so and get five points, you know, to win the game type of thing. So, yeah, it, it puts pre pressure on the kicker a lot more and decision making. So, yeah, but um, yeah, um, you know, I was going to we'll probably start coming down with the with the questions man I, I just wanted to reflect again or in recap and to say uh thank you for everyone who's who's been with us uh, all the way um please don't forget to like and subscribe and also share this video even if you've not watched it now it'll still be available afterwards you can still go and watch it all the way through it really helps for our watch time and uh, if you subscribe remember on youtube it is free to subscribe um, it really helps us to be able to do what we're doing now. We, there's a lot more in store. Um, it is so. It is really fascinating to hear uh, Andre's story. Um, and and he's a, he's a great guy. He's a fantastic guy. You know, he, he's got great experiences as well. Um, the fact that he's given, taken out time to give us uh, and to to come and tell his story, uh, Andre. I just wanted to say once again, absolutely fantastic stuff, man. Thank you so so much for taking time out, you know, and, and come and share your story with us tonight. Um, Thank you. I really do appreciate the opportunity and uh, appreciate you and uh, De La Sports as well, uh, giving giving people the opportunity to just share their story with everyone else. Mm, oh, that's brilliant. Um, before, we, before we start wrapping up, I was going to ask you, um, if you didn't play rugby at all, what do you think you would have been doing? Where do you where do you think or oh, you would have been? What would you be doing? Um, at school, I was I was very serious about cricket as well. Um, up until I got my shoulder injury, um, that quite took it like ended it for me. So I played mm -hmm. afterwards, but it wasn't the same for me. So <clears throat> cricket would have been an option, 
Otherwise, I would definitely be just coming back to the roots, be a farmer. It's very rewarding for me. And uh, in these past few months, I've learned so much again, wow. being out of it for quite a while, quite a while and just coming back, uh, being humble, being knowing where everything comes from, and being mm. thankful for what you have. That's deep, that's deep. You know, I, I, I really embrace that. Wow. When you say, you know, being on the farm and I can only imagine like, you know, I'm a very, I would like to think I'm a very quiet person within, within, you know, like I like to talk a lot, but I'm, I'm a very deep thinker in, in, you know, I, I like peace as well. My own, I'm where, where I'm at at the moment, we, we got loads of space as well. And um, every day that I'm going out, coming back, I don't take it for granted. You know, I see cows right here next to us and the children run out and they're like, ah, cows, and then they want the bike in and out. And they, it's just brilliant. It's just brilliant. I don't take it for granted. And I and I, I can re, I can relate to that to some degree. Um, you know, I, I don't blame you by saying, you know, if I can go back to the farm, just be at peace, just work, you know, where everything is coming from, you know, what you're eating, stuff like that. It's brilliant, you know, because you put your hand into it. So that's fantastic. Um, is there any... Anything, maybe two, two or three things you could, you would like to share with especially youngsters that you would like to leave them with. Maybe a bit of word of encouragement or anything, or to anyone listening. Oh, I think I would tell youngsters to not look down on themselves and the circumstances they are at the moment, but to work towards better circumstances and the world doesn't owe anyone anything you you determine your success um, mm -hmm. my dad he constantly reminds me of your attitude uh, determines your success and that that plays a big role for me um, i've also read uh, victor matfield's book and uh, they told uh, there was a quote in it and i quite live by it where they say you outwork your opponent when you're working while they're asleep. <clears throat> I think that, that plays a big role. And um, I've, I've heard the South African guys, the, the Sevens boys, talking a lot about Neil Paul and, and telling them better people makes better rugby players. And I think yeah. the world needs a, a lot more better people <laughs> at the moment. So just true, be a true. good people and uh, live, live your dream. Love your dream. I like that. Better people make better rugby players, man. That's well said. Um, Andre, once again, um, I don't know, obviously, if I've touched on it, but um, for the future, you know, wherever you, whatever direction you're going to run into, man, I'm looking forward to, you know, to watching uh, what you're going to do. Um, obviously, I'm not sure what your next plan is uh, and what the outlook is, and obviously, it's, the, the corona and you know if things start opening up um you know we might you might obviously go overseas or wherever you find yourself i'm really really excited uh, for you and uh you know i wish you all the best and all the success man. um it's brilliant absolutely brilliant thank you Ron. Um, i really do appreciate it yeah and we just um we just want to say as well from our point of view uh once again i'd like to thank you uh, for your time and for sharing your story and to everyone who's been joining us and also been subscribing thank you so much look after yourselves uh please stay safe and keep working hard and be inspired be inspired you've you've certainly inspired me you know i've had such a great laugh and like i said please take care and hopefully we'll do this again sometime thank you ron really do appreciate it stay safe awesome thanks thanks again cheers Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.